Excitement in the kitchen. Say, let's see the excitement. All right. Just you come along with me and I'll show it to you. Hello, I'm Jonathan, Senor Smoke, here at Curdo's in Westchester County. I'm coming at you in late December, high atop appliance and grill mountain here. I call it the sanctuary, the place of informed appliance and outdoor kitchen knowledge. I actually picked up yet another accessory from them. This one is the indirect roasting pod. The layperson may look at this and say, well, you know, what are you going to do with it? You're just going to throw something on there and you're going to indirect roast it. Well, that would be the very straightforward way to look at it. Of course, the way Senor Smoke approaches things, I try to F up the whole program and just completely approach things from a contrarian or, you know, sideways viewpoint on things. And what I did with this is I looked at the indirect roasting pod, which in essence is a, um, it's a great system that you would put typically on like your middle burner, um, though it can be, it can really be put in any of them, but I use it in the middle burner. And what you're doing is you're cooking with whatever is on it, which is elevated above a roasting pan. And then you're using the, the, the um, adjacent burners for your heat source. So there's no heat coming up uh, from underneath it. So there's kind of like a convection process going on. You're cooking it slower, you're roasting, you're getting savory, uh, you know, you're savoring those juices that are going in the roasting pan. So it would be a very creative way to do, say, your turkey on Thanksgiving or holiday if you weren't gonna fry it or smoke it. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna smoke mine. Um, but what I did this weekend is um, I took the indirect roasting pod and I experimented with it with four different signals of flaming fury on it. What I mean by that is I took a chicken and what I decided to do is to make a uh, Spanish influenced salt crusted chicken. So of course I start off with an organic Bell and Evans um, air chilled bird, very important. I don't care what grill you have, what you know, your cooking uh, level is, the bottom line is if you don't work with the right materials, you're gonna make garbage. So. Um, what I did was I, uh, I put the bird on top of the indirect roasting pot in the middle slot I have a 42 inch grill so there are three burners my particular grill is a sear zone so going from left to right sear zone regular burner regular burner the indirect roasting pot was on the middle burner I have a roasting pan underneath it with root vegetables the chicken is sitting atop of the grate and uh, the oiled grates and there is no heat coming from below. So what I did initially was I turned the burner on high to the right of it. At this point, I did not introduce the left side burner, which would be the sear zone because I thought it was gonna to get too hot. I also introduced smoke into the equation, okay? And by doing so, I went down to the dedicated smoke burner, which is underneath front facing integrated. They also call it the urban fusion system. It is one of the incredible things about the Alfresco because only they in DCS, to my knowledge, at least in grills that I carry, have an integrated smoking chamber within the grill. We don't like smoking boxes, folks. So at this point, bird in the middle, heat coming from the right, heat and smoke coming from down low, 5,000 BTU burner. So I waited about 15, 20 minutes and guess what? I was barely, barely cold smoking at that point. I couldn't get the needle past 200 degrees. Um, so I realized that something had to, you know, we had to give something up over here, had to change up the program. So what I did was at that point, I felt that the bird had had a decent amount of smoke at that time. So I went over to the sear zone and I turned it on, okay? The heat, the temperature in the grill flew up within five to 10 minutes, okay? I was basically up to 400 degrees, I'm full on roasting now. So let me paint the picture again as to where we are. Left side sear zone, middle indirect roasting the chicken. 
On the right side, I have my normal burner up high as well. The smoke burner is off right now. And by the way, it was loaded with apple chips. I wanted some uh, of that nice fruit wood uh, smoke on there. So we are now up above 400 degrees. I let it go for probably about another half hour, 45 minutes. At this point, I'm really starting to watch the chicken because it's starting to transform. Open up the hood, what did I see? Left side, side facing the sear zone, crisping way, way, way quicker than the right side because of the heat. Now remember the alfresco sear zone, the vaunted hellfire burner, okay? You're at 1100 to 1800 degrees on there. You can't go lower. I did temp it down. I did lower it, but I was getting a lot of heat. So what do we do? Rotated the bird. Rotated the bird so the other side was now getting the hellfire heat on the other side. Closed the lid down, hung out, probably had about two more beers at this point. Went back about 10 minutes later or so, 15 minutes. Lifted up the hood again. We have crispness going on. Beautiful, beautiful finish on top of the bird. We're not done yet. But I realized that the Hellfire burner, I mean, it was really going up 450. I had to tamp things down, so I turned it off. What I did at that point, I introduced the rotisserie burner in the back, the infrared rotisserie burner. And I turned off actually all burners down below. So now I only have heat coming from the back. Close the lid. After about 10 minutes, checked on it again. I was getting a lot of heat, extra crisping going on near the top cavity that was facing that IR burner, okay, the IR rotisserie burner. So we rotated the bird again and went about another 10 minutes or so, and then I was done. Now, what, here's, what I, here's what I realized by, about this, okay? And by the way, the thing tasted completely out of control, but I'll get to that in a second. I found that the finish on the bird with the skin, the crisp, it got crisper than any other chicken that I have made in the last two years of grilling and smoking my ass off back there. And that goes for every grill that I own, the DCS, the Alfresco, the Wolf, the Memphis, okay, the Kamado Joe, and whatever else I've been using. Nothing has become crisper, than, and actually smoke tissing on the Alfresco as well. Nothing gave me as crispy as skin. Now yes, the salt content probably helped as well, but the crispness was out of this world, okay? So when we eventually took the bird down, 15 minutes for temping, then cut it open. Oh, I mean, it, I mean, my wife was astounded at the flavor. And I didn't really even eat the skin. There was too much salt on it, but the moistness inside cooked basically to a perfect 165 to 175. And I didn't really have that much of a variation as far as the finish in the drumsticks to the breast meat, which you know is always, there's a dichotomy going on over there. You gotta kinda traverse that. It's a slippery slope. So I am now a devotee to the indirect roasting pod. And what I say to you is experiment with it. Absolutely experiment. You're gonna definitely wanna hit whatever you're putting on there with, with, with a little bit of smoke. I mean, that's how I do it. So you know that the front facing um, integrated smoke chamber is definitely gonna, I call it the house of smoke, if you've seen one of those videos. Uh, and that's controlled smoke, by the way, because you can dial high, low, medium on that. Another beautiful thing about the grill. Um, but you can control your smoke, so you use that not so much as a heat source, you're using it as a flavor source, flavoring it with beautiful smoke. And then as far as the grill itself, you're gonna go manipulate the heat from all sides with your regular burners, if that's what you have, with your sear zone and your regular burner and then you're eventually going to work in the infrared heat from the back with the rotisserie. So I don't know what the great recipe is and how to use this heat but that's the beautiful thing about the alfresco is that you have multiple multiple ways to approach these problems multiple and different heat sources. It blows my mind it really does it's Every time I use this grill, it's like I'm listening to a dead show from the early 70s and I'm just, I just don't know where it's going to go. You know what I'm saying? When they start playing Dark Star, they, they're doing whatever in the jam. You just don't know where it's going, but you know it's going to go somewhere good. So folks, that's it. The indirect roasting pot, it's very inexpensive. I think it's a few hundred dollars or something like that. The price is probably popping up on the screen right now. Definitely consider it. I didn't talk to anybody this year about it. Shame on my ass for that. This is a great, great accessory to have for this grill. That's it. Any questions, please, jonathanacurtles.com. Hit me up. 
And remember, remember, we are happy to assist you in your alfresco kitchen or just buying an alfresco grill as a onesie. We ship all over the country, no problems, free delivery.